a big one for me was uh, my sophomore year of college, uh, I tore my ACL. And um, when I tore it, I was literally in my mind about to like break through in college, like for myself to like elevate my game and be something greater than what I was. And so um, when I tore it, it was just like, it was, it was traumatizing for me. Yeah, devastating because like, you know, I really felt that this was going to be my year, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, God always has a way of, you know, bringing things to light when you go through different situations. And stuff. Hello and welcome to The Middle. I'm so excited you have joined us today here on The Yellow Couch. Thank you for your love and your support, subscribing and liking and sharing these videos with your friends and family. We are really excited when we see how these messages are resonating with you and you are in for a treat today because I have a very special guest, my new best friend. We've just decided that. Absolutely. I'm gonna have him sign a contract before you leave, <laughs> so he can't renege on the deal. <laughs> this is my friend, Ernie Drisdom. Drisdom. Yeah. Sounds like wisdom. wisdom and yeah. he has a lot of wisdom. You may know him from a recent, would you call it semi-viral video? It, it got pretty good response Some, pretty fast. Yeah. Locally viral. -ish. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it was a message that I resonated with. And so I knew immediately that I wanted to have you come and be on the yellow couch. You're representing a family, though, yes. because you didn't just do <laughs> this project on your own. The video and the song is called Hold On. And your brothers, did you have two brothers? I have three total. But um, in the video. In the video, two of them. Yeah. Two are in the video. Yeah. And I love the message that you shared, especially with the intensity that's happening in the world right now. We could make a pretty big list of reasons why uplifting music and conversations like we're going to have today are so crucial yeah. for saving lives. You address some pretty um, intense topics that are so important right away in the video. The first one that shows up right on the screen mm -hmm is what a lot of people are talking about and what we've talked about and addressed in a number of episodes here about race. Mm -hmm. But I also loved and appreciated that the message goes beyond just that. It goes beyond the headlines of COVID-19, race issues, mm -hmm. and the message is very much about everything that we're dealing with. But you're not just a music guy. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you love to do beyond the music? Uh, well, I play basketball professionally right now. Um, I was sent home for COVID, obviously, but uh, love to do that. Um, Who do you play for? Uh, it's this team in Mexico called uh, Hermosillo Rayos. Um, Hermosillo is the capital of Sonora out there. And then Rayos, I think it means like rays or something. It's electricity. So. Okay. So is basketball like huge in Mexico or is it still becoming huge? People actually don't even know that there's like professional teams out there, but yeah. um, there's a lot of fans. Like there are a lot of fans. Yeah. Um, all of our games, especially in the um, the playoffs, because we ended up winning a championship. And so Look at you. it was sold out. And I mean, just everywhere we went, there was a lot of fans. So, so it is it, if you were to compare it to soccer, is it there yet? No. No, but no. soccer in the rest of the world right. is the biggest, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, still, like, you would be surprised, like, and, I mean, they're intense. Like, they know basketball. You know, they, you know, a lot of them show up to the games with beer in their hands, and they go crazy. Yes. They do. <laughs> it's crazy. So, it's do crazy. you like playing down there? I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. The people are so warm. Yeah. And yeah. loving, right? Mm -hmm. They just, you know, they're genuine. I've noticed that a lot about um, people you know, outside of the country in general. Like I've, I've been to Japan one year and they're just amazing people. Um, super sincere, you know, I don't even know them. And they're like, you know, if you need anything, let me know. And, you know, just fans. And We, we could take a lesson from that. Absolutely. I think that goes into what we wanted to talk about today on The Middle. Mm -hmm. um, my son lived in Africa for two years. Mm -hmm. And the minute he landed in Atlanta, mm -hmm. he knew he was back in America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Mom, everyone's like down on their phones. Right, right. No one's saying hi. Mm -hmm. So we could learn from that. So for all of our international viewers, shout out for teaching right. the Americans how to be a little kinder, <laughs> right? And I think especially with COVID right now, we're walking around with masks. Mm -hmm. And so I was just talking to a business owner that she had to buy the plastic um, face covers for her, her employees because mm -hmm. they weren't smiling. And she's like, and you could hear it in their voice. They weren't being kind. Right, right, and we right. so are needing that with race issues, politics, 
COVID-19, depression, mental health. Right. So with basketball, you've, you've probably had your own set of setbacks but here at The Metal, we kind of try to unpack stories that we don't have all the answers for. And right. I think that's what I loved about your music video. The message is so clear that we're just going to hold on for today. Right. Right. We don't have all the answers for yeah. everything. What lessons have you learned from playing basketball that's helped you hold on? Um, well, just for one, being on my own, um, you know, you don't have your family. Uh, physically there with you, you know what I'm saying, everywhere I go. And so, but it was like that in college for me also. My family moved here to Utah um, when I got to college. And so... And you played where? I played at Cal Poly Pomona. Okay. Yeah. Um, and He's so, representing. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> and um, it matches the all couch. Right, Let's just right. be straight about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, you know, that was, that was one thing. I definitely had to grow up, um, learned a lot, um, you know, just meeting different people, uh, being able to... to uh, experience different personalities and how to deal with those types of people and stuff like that. And me, like I'm pretty easy going anyway, like I'm more of a personable type of dude. And so it wasn't difficult for me to, you know, adapt, but at the same time, you still have those people that test you. And so every you time, hold right. On for that. You know what I'm saying? You got to hold you're on. You're like, really God, this yeah. is how you're going to teach me today. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to send me that annoying team player, right, right, right. Or teammate or yeah. roommate or something, you know? something. Yeah. But um, A big one for me was, uh, my sophomore year of college, uh, I tore my ACL. And um, when I tore it, I was literally in my mind about to like break through in college, like for myself to like elevate my game and be something greater than what I was. And so um, when I tore it, it was just like, it was, it was traumatizing for me. Yeah, devastating because like, you know, I really felt that this was going to be my year, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, God always has a way of, you know, bringing things to light when you go through different situations. And so um, once I tore it, you know, it's a six to 12 month recovery. Um, I ended up recovering in six and without even thinking about, you know, I'm like, you know, I don't even want to play next year. I want a red shirt. Um, my coaches weren't prepared for it. And so they were like, if you re if you play this year, we can red shirt you the following year. I'm like, okay. And so um, that turned from like the worst situation that I could have imagined to, the being best. the best thing that like I mean I started coming off the bench at first some things happened one of my other teammate where he became ineligible and so they moved me to the starting lineup and then like midway through the season all of a sudden like you know we go to the playoffs and then I become All-American that year <laughs> and I'm just like like wow you know it's just like I cried that day you know because it was it was it was huge for me so I love that story of God really um, showing you that his miracles are bigger. Right. But in the middle of that, though, when you're trying to heal from this injury mm -hmm. and you haven't seen the miracle come forward, right? Mm -hmm. And were you angry? I wasn't angry. I, I, if anything, I felt um, like I've lost hope mm. a little bit. I don't, I don't, I've never been angry at God, you know? Like, I, I think it's just more of those things, like, because... I've always, and you know, over time things obviously get better. And so you start to look back and it's like, okay, you know, I've been through this and now I'm out of it. You know, I've been through this, I'm out of it. And so it's kind of one of those things, but um, I wasn't angry. I was just, it kind of felt a little discouraging for a second. So did you always have that part of your soul that knew things would eventually work out or have you had enough of these experiences that that's new for you to have that kind of hope when things are bad. Do you understand my question? I think so. Um, Did you like, this is a big one, right? Yeah. This is your, this is your dream. This right, is right. what you've trained for. This is what you've worked so hard for. Right. And so it's a big one, but did you have something to pull from? Because I think, especially with the song, hold on mm -hmm. and what's going on and our viewers right now. And all of us, we were talking before we started taping mm -hmm. that it's not just the big stuff. It's the, my car broke down. Exactly. I can't pay rent. Um, I my I'm not getting along with my family. Right, so right, I'm feeling right. lonely. Right. Did you have other things that you pulled from in that middle? Absolutely. Um, in high school, um, uh. <laughs> from 10th grade to 12th grade, um, me, it was me and, one of my other brothers, but and my parents, my other two brothers are already out here. We were evicted from three houses in two years. And so literally like living in one place and we have to move around a corner 
because we can't afford the rent at this spot. And then, you know, from there, we had to move around the corner again. And then eventually by my senior year, I'm living like 20 minutes from school because we had to move in with my godparents, like all of us, like my parents included. <laughs> and, you know, me and my brother are staying in this little room and then my parents are staying in one of my god sister's rooms and, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, all of that is, you know, my mom, she was so distraught, you know, like yeah. she was like, I just want better she for you. She wants better know? for her and kids. I'm like, it's not your fault. You know, like I'm not mad that we have to do this. It's just something we have to go through. And so when I went through the thing with my knee, it was just another one of those things. It's like, okay, like we've been through this before. You know? And you had seen God help you absolutely. before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, when I got to college, they moved out here and um, they moved in with my oldest brother, CJ. Uh, to get back on their feet, you know. So if you like watch that. the video, he's the brother standing in front of yeah. the Utah State mm -hmm. Capitol. Yeah. yeah. So they moved in with him, got back on their feet, and now, you know, they got their own spot. They and do. Great jobs and, every, like, everything worked out, you mm -hmm. know. And so, like, I've always known that um, trouble doesn't last always, you know. It's, there's there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And they probably never would have considered moving here. Absolutely not. For like the first, like, because they've been here, I think, 10 years now. But like the first six, my mom was like, I'm, I'm moving back to LA. I'm moving back. Like, <laughs> she did not want to be here. There's but... a unique, <laughs> there's a unique Utah culture. Oh, yeah. yeah. We love it. Right, right. It's but our it's, family. It's also like progressed over time. Too. Yes, like, it has. It's adapted yeah. for sure. And yeah. so, um, we're both from California where yeah. we're used to more diversity and right. here it is diverse, but sometimes you don't feel that way. Right. Right. right? right. And exactly. so you have to look for it to yeah. see. It. <laughs> yeah. So your, your awareness then as you fast forward and now you're in this situation with basketball and, and you see where God is still opening the doors and the miracles are coming mm -hmm. and then it leads you to professional basketball. Right. right, right. And then COVID hits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. And all sports fans out there are like, nah. I feel your pain. You know? right? <laughs> it's like, but not really, but yeah. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. the players are feeling it on a different level than the Absolutely. fans are feeling yeah. it, right? We're we're all missing the things that we normally turn to mm -hmm. to help us when things don't feel great or life is hard. Mm -hmm. That stuff's not happening yeah. like it used to nah. happen. So we're having to dig so deep. I mean, I am. Right. Where I'm like, wait, that distraction isn't happening and mm -hmm. that distraction's yeah. not happening. It's pretty much me and God right. every day. Yep. And yep. so what have you learned and what kind of led to the development of the song and then releasing it? Um, well, when I got back here um, from Mexico, when I'm not playing basketball, I'm in the studio. Like when I'm home, I'm just in the studio all the time. And then I work out and stuff, obviously. But like... So your um, music and basketball, I'm yeah, God. That's yeah, about it. Yeah, like I love... Like, I've always wanted to do both at the same time. And so um, when I got back here, I just saw it as a chance for me to catch up with music, right? And so um, in my brother's studio all the time, Lake House Studios is in Salt Lake City. And um, my brother Tim comes in and he had, I remember him uh, uh, starting to write the song a while ago, like years ago. Because like he leads a ago. choir, yeah, right? Yeah. But he wrote it when I was like a teenager, like oh. 15 or something like that, right? So that's like, yeah, 12 years ago. That's when he first started to write the song. And then, like, I never really, like, thought about it. But when he brought it back up, I'm like, oh, I did wonder whatever happened to that song, right? And so he came into the studio one day, and he's like, I have this idea. And I was like, what's up? And then he was like, um, the song Hold On, because it was still called Hold On back then, too. He was like, the song Hold On, um, I want to, like, bring that back. I think some things have happened. And with Tim... Is his story to tell, um, but he was involved in a racial situation. A really, um, really hard yeah. one. Maybe we'll have to have right. Tim on to <laughs> talk about that because yeah. I think it's a it's an important story. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was enough that we can just tease it this way right, that right. he could have gotten really hard hearted from it, Absolutely. just like any hard thing, right? Yeah. And he chose to do what? Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Like, this one is for that lady sitting home alone. Contemplate a life if she should live it or be gone. This one is for that boy who think he getting grown. He make his own decisions cause he ran away from home. This one is for that mama crying on the phone. Trying to mend relations cause addiction had her soul. It's a long road to get where we belong. But the journey makes us strong and trouble never lasts too long. It's what we come to. Yeah. I've been looking for the love. Devil trying to hold me up. I got my foot up on his neck while I look to God above. I know that in this battle I've already but won. And so he brought that to me and he was just like, I want to do this. I think it's the perfect time to do it. Um, 
you know, not even with just like everything else, but like, you know, as far as, you know, social injustice and everything, but just COVID and, you know, the fact that like, you know, I don't have a job right now yeah. and like different stuff. Right. And so he was like, I want to do it, but I want to do it with our whole family. And I was like, okay, like, what do you need? He was like, I just need you to write a verse. And I'm like, okay. And so I wrote a verse and I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be his verse, my verse. And then maybe Carrie had a verse or CJ, sorry, <laughs> CJ had a verse and then Anise had a verse or something like that. So I finished my first verse and then he was like, okay, um, I want you to write another verse. And I was like, why? And then, cause it was so good. I mean, <laughs> I was just like, I thought we were doing this to, like everybody, you know? And he's like, well, I have an idea. And I was like, well, what's your idea, bro? And he was like, I want this song to come out under your name. You already had two songs out, you know, granted. I mean, they're just two songs, but he was hey, like, that's you're a, not you know, you're an artist, whatever, you know, yeah. um, you have these two songs out. I want this song under your name. For one, I want this to help um, establish yourself, uh, your name as an artist. Um, I think this song can be really powerful and everything like that. And I'm like, I totally agree, you know, um, but I was still hesitant to do it just because like I'm a team player, you know? <laughs> so, um, but I did it and um, helped with the production and stuff like that. Just making it sound more like my style, you know, as far as like hip hop -y and stuff. And um and then, you know, yeah, my kids, I'm just going to be honest, because yeah. I've been listening to it a lot. Mm -hmm. They're always like, wow, you're expanding your genre. <laughs> like, no, I always have been right, encompassing right. of the hip and the hop. Right. <laughs> Don't judge me. But this is my faith and my hip hop. Exactly. Like, that's yeah. what's so great about yeah. it. And mental health mm -hmm. and and validating and I believe in having anthems yeah, especially right. in the morning I don't know late at night and in the morning those can be really hard times yeah. for people and it is a beautiful yeah it just lifts you up gives you some energy it does. you know um but that's what we did and then you know at first honestly we were supposed like once we recorded everything he was like um I want to maybe send this to a couple of like bigger names just to get it out there right like on a bigger platform um, but the more we listened to it, the more we put into it, um, he was like, you know what, let's just do it ourselves. Like, because this is something that hits home with us. Like mm. they didn't write it. We wrote it, you know, it's personal. Yeah. And so, um, we decided to do that. And then we was like, the only way this is going to really like, I feel like impact more people is if we put a visual out with it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. And it's wonderful. And we'll have a link to it. We're going to, we're going to make sure our audience can find it mm -hmm. and support it. I, I love to talk with our guests about what gets them through and the story in the Bible of the children of Israel wandering for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And their, their manna came one a day, right. didn't last for the next day. You can't bank the food because it would go bad, right, right, right? right? And I love the stories and examples you've shared that you really have had some life experiences that have taught you to trust God and his timing. Mm -hmm. And that's really the message of the song. And I think of your life and yeah. your family's gift to all of us is mm -hmm. to really put words and music on feelings that are complex. Right. But what would you want our viewers to know that is your manna that you have to do it every day? Cause if not, the hope goes. Um, for me, it's just, uh, like I make one goal a day for myself. Okay. Um, it, it varies, but I do the same thing every day for the most part. And so if anything, you know, for me personally, it's like, okay, music, right? So I have to at least finish a beat by today or write some lyrics by today, you know? Um, but, um, every single day, like you come in contact with different people and the impact that you have on them. And so, um, that's always just like something in the back of my mind, but it's so natural to me that I, I always want to just bless somebody every day, whatever it can be. You know I what love I'm saying? that. Like, so your gift of music is your way of blessing the world. And I love the idea of having a goal every day, especially with mental health. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if depression's pretty intense and anxiety is intense. It's hard to break it down to yeah. just do. So when you say I already had two songs out, that's not nothing. That's, <laughs> you know, especially yeah. when there's so much out in the world that makes us feel that success has to look like this. Right, right, right. So when we're not here, we just don't even do this. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea that, for our manna that get up each day and do one thing. Mm. But what you said, which I, I try to do the same is can that one thing be a blessing to right. someone? Exactly. Because then, then it doesn't matter if there's not a Grammy yet oh, or yeah. whatever, right? It's 
are you showing up to share your thing mm. and if it helps one person? And I'm going to just say the video has helped me. It's helped all of those that I've shared it with. And it's the message I've tried to share that we really don't have answers. That's mm. why we have this show. This right. show is about <laughs> like we're in the middle of a lot of stuff. Right. And right. It, it's intense. Mm. And sometimes all you can do is, is hold on. That's is it. hold on. That's is it. hold on. And God's got a plan, right? Absolutely. He's working on your miracle. Mm-hmm. It may look like a ton of shut doors, right. but right. he's working it out. What's next for you? Um, well, get healthy first. Uh, yeah. For my knee. But um, I don't know if our viewers can see. He's got, <laughs> yeah, got a bionic. Little, little brace on. <laughs> he's got some bionic stuff going on. This isn't the same injury. It's a new one, it's right? It's a new injury, yeah. God uh, may be trying to leg, though, but. creating a pause in oh, your absolutely. life. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but it's a good pause. I'm, I'm, I'm good with it, you know? Yeah. I'm not even tripping. But um, just making some more music. Um, Definitely, I've decided to just kind of just become an artist now. Like before it was just me doing both things. It's like, you know, obviously basketball is my career and music. It was just more of a hobby that I was just trying to be really good at. Right. But now like I'm, I'm thriving to be an artist and still play basketball. So, uh, I've released, uh, two more songs since hold on. Um, one with one of my, uh, one of my guys, his name is Kel. He goes by LA Kel. And then, uh, another one with this girl, Frida, she also at the studio, um, that's Love Jones and Bright Souls. And then um, just starting to work with more people, work with more artists and, and um, just really network and try to just build this city up in a positive way. And so well, um, we need it. Yeah, we need it beyond the city. We need it in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. need to be smiling and kind and and we need to hold on. Absolutely. And I love that you just shared a COVID miracle. Right. Yeah. If God's like, <laughs> we're not doing basketball right now, then. You jump all in Absolutely. to this other way in which you can share hope, which is through music. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for being my new best friend. So much fun. <laughs> so it's on much camera, fun. right? Then oh, I'm yeah. going to edit it out. <laughs> We're best friends. Now. We're best friends. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And thank you for um, sharing this video with, with your friends and family that need this message that maybe they've, like Ernie shared, had some big setbacks and they're not sure if God's aware of them anymore. Or maybe they just need to find this song and, right. and, like me, use it as an anthem to get through today. And whatever middle you're in, we hope that you will, especially if you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or or giving up, that you know that you are of value and that we will never be better without you. And so we, we, we invite you to hold on to that.